In this video, I'm gonna talk about Super Knight Riders. I have long spoken about Super Hang-On with enough enthusiasm that Frankie McDonald would gladly tell me to calm the fuck down, and therefore it is no surprise that I take an interest into any video game that involves motorcycles and aims to reproduce the old-school feeling. I shall offer a word of caution to all who seek to take on this endeavor, and it is that one must either fully embrace the retro design and everything that it entails, or improve significantly on the original formula to make it palatable to the gaming world of today. It seems like a matter of course when on the outside looking in, but the devil is in the details. Failing at taking either path properly is the average greenhorn who declares that he is going to make a racing game without further thought put into it. He runs off, hacks out a prototype at the local code bash, gives it a spit shine, and then calls it a finished video game that he is certain is going to set him for life with millions in the bank. The replay value of an arcade game is its excessive difficulty and its insatiable hunger for your coins. Creating a home version of such a game typically implies a downgrade of the difficulty, either because the hardware cannot handle so many deadly traps on screen at the same time, or because other features were introduced in the presentation to give the game a longer lifespan now that your playtime is no longer dictated by the quarters in your pocket. The video game of today is meant to be completed. It is an item on a long list of boxes to be checked, and once it is done it is barely looked at ever again unless the game was built from the ground up to be played exclusively in multiplayer. The idea of putting in a session simply to improve a high score has been relegated to Tetris and to shoot em up games that feature thousand year old anime girls that look disturbingly underage. I am aware that this was more roundabout than the ending music of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, but the point is that one cannot mindlessly copy-paste a 30-year-old design and believe that it will still work. The end result is a boomer dropped into a crowd of millennials who know exactly how to hate him. The main character in this game somehow is a young blonde racing prodigy with a beautiful anime picture and a 3D model that looks like a small child. One could have cut out the presentation picture and the voice moaning to turn this character into an anonymous masked racer that can be a fraction more relatable, but life mysteries and two testicles have decided that this would not be the case. The game has two modes, course and stage. In course mode, you run through each of the six different environments in six different times of the day. In stage mode, you run through one single environment in six different times of the day. Now, because the racer's model is absolutely photorealistic and could have been mistaken for a real-life actress, the developer saw it fit to introduce classic mode, which replaces everyone with a low-polygon version of themselves. Control is for acceleration and Alt is for braking. That is it. These are the controls. Now here is how to change them. You can't. You heard me. These are the controls, you are gonna use them, and you are gonna like them. If you want a game where you can change the key assignment, there are hundreds of them out there, but say goodbye to your pretty blonde girl splash screen. The stages follow one another, and resemble one another in a wholly forgettable manner, to such a point that I got fooled into believing the course layout was procedurally generated. It consists of long sweeping turns that make it obvious the challenge is centered around avoiding the other racers, not around keeping yourself from running into the scenery. This is generally doable, except during the evening sections, where you have all the visual capability of Stevie Wonder, and it takes two or three collisions to doom your run to failure. Music consists of generic hard rock song, generic heavy metal song, generic Euro trance song, and generic everything song. It is not a matter of choosing a favorite, but rather choosing which song you least want to not hear this time. Then again, even with a masterpiece of a soundtrack, it would not be enough to save the motorcycle's one cylinder baby go-kart engine noise. There is enough to keep a player busy for 60 minutes. And I say 60 minutes because it sounds at least bigger than one hour. 
squeeze in another 30 minutes or so if you go for the gauntlet mode where you run through every possible combination of environment and time of the day in succession but I would not impose that punishment on even Paul Bernardo lest I stoop down to his level. I can understand that there is a noble intent behind the exercise, much in the same way that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. There is an idea, and it is good, but it is also aborted in some shape or form. There is always that feeling of what could have been had the process not stopped halfway for whatever reason. We are left with a result that seems just barely necessary, learning too late that we never asked for things to end up this way, with the final product being made to fulfill the desire of some hypothetical audience that may not actually correspond to an existing human being. In short, this game is a Walmart greeter. 